All right, guys, what's going on? I'm back at you again with another training vlog. This, I'm gonna be showing you guys my last uh, chest and shoulders routine, okay? So here, this is more so working on the upper portion of the chest and broadening out the shoulders, right? So from here, I'm gonna start with a dumbbell incline press. Now, I'm not using a dumbbell throughout this entire workout because I'm not really working with heavy weight. So if I'm only gonna be using 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, there's really no reason for me to use a barbell necessarily, right? But uh, dumbbells can actually be a very good idea for chest building because of the range of motion and things that it grants you, okay? But if you're going heavy on chest trying to uh, build more size and more strength and it makes more sense to use a barbell, that's not really my goal right now with this chest workout. I'm mainly just targeting the upper fibers of the chest, not the actual pec major. So from here, of course, working with these dumbbells, it allows you to get more of a transverse movement, right? And the, the pecs bring that transverse movement into play. So when you're bringing those dumbbells apart and then you're pushing them up, bringing them together, you can't really do that with a barbell. So just the mechanics are way different here. Now. What I'm trying to do is here, I'm training for physique, right? I'm training for aesthetics. So I wanna build some nice round shoulders and a broad chest across the top. And I'm, what I'm doing is actually really working too because as you can see, I got some pretty good development up top here and it's only gonna get better, right? So um, with the incline chest press, all of this, I'm still maximizing getting in the most amount of shoulder work as I can. So I start uh, primary lift as a dumbbell uh, incline chest press okay um, so now the next exercise after that is going to be a variation of the incline chest press called the incline the closed chest press and this is where you squeeze the dumbbells together so you're maintaining tension on the 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 pecs for the entire rep okay so this is like the equivalent of if you were to do cable flies okay and you bring the hands together and you feel that squeeze when you bring those hands together and really squeeze your hands together that really maximizes the activation of the pec muscles right within the lift so the closed press maintains that squeeze throughout the entire rep while pressing the dumbbells up so this just maximizes the contraction and stimulation of uh the pec muscles okay um so this has a, this really will bring a great change to your chest workout. Now this is an exercise where you don't need to use a whole lot of weight and you don't need to focus on locking your elbows out at the top because here we're mainly just focusing on the squeeze at the chest, okay? And maintaining tension, all right? So it's kind of hard to maintain that squeeze on the chest with the elbows fully extended. Uh, some of you, it may be easier for you if you have more of a range of motion, but it is definitely not required, right? So that last 10 or 20% of the extension of the arms is not a mandatory thing. Just focus on pressing, squeezing the dumbbells together during this lift, all right? Now, the next one, I only use two chest exercises here, right? That closed press being an assistance chest exercise to uh, the incline press. So now here we're going to work more so on the medial delts, really working on medial delts here because from the front, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get more rounded shoulders so I can have a broader appearance from the front, right? And so if you want your shoulders to look more round from the front, definitely take your time and be consistent about hitting your, your medial delt here on the side to get those to pop out so you can get some nice round 3D shoulders, okay? Uh, so to do that, I started with the dumbbell medial, uh, dumbbell lateral raise, okay? And so basically with this exercise, first steps first, you're gonna drop the shoulders down, right? Depress the scapula, and then you're gonna abduct the elbows, abduct the, the, the arms away from the body. Now it's important to uh, depress your scapula, right? Because if you have your shoulders hiked up in the movement here, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a lot of trap activation. And being that your trapezius is a larger muscle, that muscle now is has a greater chance of taking over 
and then your medial delts are now taking a back seat as far as muscular activation. And so now essentially this becomes a, tra a trapezius exercise. So we want this to be a medial delt exercise. So we want to try to remove the traps from each rep as much as possible so that we can maximize muscular contraction and stimulation on the medial delts, okay? Now another pointer here is when you are basically going through the rep, you're gonna do this palms down, right? Now to enhance the contraction of the lift, you're gonna tilt your thumb down to the ground and your pinkies up, right? So you're gonna have this internal rotation at the wrist and that's going to enhance the stimulation of the medial delts there because it forces you to now raise your elbows a little bit more uh, out to the side, thus making you work the uh, medial delts more, right? So every bit counts when you're trying to get that muscular stimulation. This is not a strength program, right? We're not doing this for strength. I'm doing this for aesthetics, for actual skeletal muscle growth here, all right? so. Medial delts is a small muscle. You do not need to lift a ton of weight on this muscle. It's actually a very bad idea to lift a lot of heavy weight to hit this muscle because it is a small muscle. It doesn't make sense to hit big weights on a small muscle. You're just asking for an injury there, right? And so now again, moving on to the accessory exercise, right? We had an accessory exercise for chest. Now we have an accessory exercise for shoulders, in particular the medial delt. Now the reason for this is what I did was I isolated the left from the right. So I do one side at a time with the cable. So it's a cable lateral raise, right? And so this is good if you have one arm that's way stronger than the other and when you do both arms together you feel one shoulder way more than the other or one arm one side way more than the other. This allows you to address that where you can now focus more so on one side, right? So this is that mind muscle connection thing. So to develop more of a mind muscle connection with your weaker side you would then just isolate the body in half and just work on that one weaker side and really concentrate on the form and the contraction on that side and this is how you can start balancing out your musculature here now on the cables i did really really lightweight this is not a strength exercise this is solely for the purpose of just stimulating the muscle and just getting getting the most out of the workout here while maintaining its minimalistic form, right? So this, this minimalistic approach that I take to training has allowed me to develop the physique that I, that I have now, right? It's allowed me to build the muscle that I have now without wasting a ton of time in the gym, right? So like myself being on a plant-based diet, uh, consuming way more calories, right? Being that the calories that I consume are not making me fat, I don't have to be at a calorie deficit eating this way. Okay, so I can be in a calorie surplus and I don't have to worry about burning all these extra calories. So that means that now I can put on mass <clears throat> easier. I can put on muscle easier because I don't have to worry about gaining fat and I don't have to worry about doing all kinds of cardio and burning extra calories, which means it's easier for me to recover because I have to do less work now. Right? So if you have a fatty diet and all type of stuff like that, you may have to do some extra cardio and things like that. You may have to do some fasting, etc. In this case, me being on a whole food plant-based diet where majority of my, of my calories are from carbs, like 65 to 70% carbs, uh, 10 to 20 or 25% protein, 20% protein, and the rest is fats, only like 10%. Uh, in between 10 and 15 percent fat and that's pretty much my, my my diet there right so my workouts are real short 45 minutes or so hour max if I'm factoring in uh, dynamic warm-ups and things like that and that's allowed me to get some pretty significant gains very quickly right and still maintain you know a seven to eight percent body fat range so that's pretty much it. That's going to be the end of this training vlog. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you found this useful, right? Um, if there's anything you want me to add or there's anything you want me to make a video on, whether it be doing legs or chest, back, whatever the case is, any type of pointers, leave it in the comments, right? If you like the video, like the video. If you haven't subscribed, you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button um, and I will see you guys 
in the next video. Take care, y'all.